I'm retired. You're retired. Are you a hiker? When are you doing a lot of walking? Uh, no. How does I, it affect I do you? walk, but not a hiker, that type of thing. Walk the dog, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. oh, walk the dog. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, it's a little multi-poo type of thing. My daughter's dog, so I get my exercise through the dog. <laughs> Those multi-poos get you into trouble. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, what we talked about last time was the pain in the legs is getting severe. We're getting concerned about some other neurological symptoms. And the question was, is it just a laminectomy to open up the spinal canal? Or the other option from a surgical standpoint is to do a fusion. And we could see on the MRI that there was a little bit of a shift in the bones of the vertebrae. And so x-rays were obtained and we're gonna review those x-rays right now. Do I have, here are those bones, the vertebrae. Here's mm -hmm. number five, four, three, two, one. You look at this bone, this square. Yes. The back of this bone ends with the back of the one below it. Yes. So there's a gentle curve that's happening, but if we follow that here, the back of this bone ends pretty flush with that, ends pretty flush with that, but the back of this bone should be back there. Do you see yeah. that? It's slipped forward. Forward. It slipped forward. The back of this bone, if I follow this down, I should be back there. And instead, I'm gr I'm moved forward. Yes. And that is a condition called slipped bone. But, <laughs> but doctors, we don't like that kind of crudity, crudeness. So we call it, in we, we turn it into Latin or Greek, we call it spondylo, which means bone, and listhesis, which means moved. Bone move. But that's so, but it's, we call it spondylolisthesis, which means this bone moved from there to there, should, should move from there to there. Mm -hmm. Now, these x rays, we have you bending. Here you can see you're bending forward. Yes. And when we look at that slip, it really doesn't change very much. And here you're bending backwards. And when we look at that slip, it's pretty much fixed in that position. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change much from when you're in a neutral position. So, you have what would be called a fixed spondylolisthesis, meaning bones are slipped, but as you bend, they don't move very much. And this, sir, is controversial. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> yeah, it's a little controversial. Some, you need surgery, you need a laminectomy. The question is whether the fusion should be added on top of it. And there are some doctors who believe the answer is no. And the reason they say that the answer is no is if you, there are about half a dozen studies involving about 250 to 300 patients where they've compared people who had a fusion or people who just had the laminectomy. And in those studies of a fairly limited number of patients, there doesn't appear to be a difference. There are other doctors who say, meh, you're crazy. You got to do a fusion. It's moved. And I mean, every almost every surgeon has experienced a situation where they do a laminectomy and then there's instability and movement. And so to those surgeons, they would say, this is crazy. Of course, you got to do a fusion. And the answer, the right answer is yes. It's, the answer is to find a surgeon who does what you would prefer and to, just to understand because you're you're not going to, if you get a surgeon who believes they should do a fusion and you say, well, just do the laminectomy alone anyway, I wouldn't do that because that's that doctor is telling you in his hands or their hands, because it could be a woman, in their hands, laminectomy sometimes results in instability. And so, you know, you want to do a fusion if that's what they normally do. On the other hand, there may be another doctor who has never experienced that instability. The way they do the laminectomy may be different. Maybe they were lucky. We don't know. But they are recommending no fusion. So you want to find a doctor who wants to do what you want to do. Uh -huh. And so the question, Mr. Carew, is... What do you want to do? Uh, that's what the surgeon asked me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, why does it always have to be up to me? <laughs> because there's no right answer. Yes. Because there's yeah. no right answer. And so your preference mm -hmm. 
when you go to the car dealer, there's no mm -hmm. right answer. So they don't say, oh, you have to have mm -hmm. this car. They yes. say, OK, there's a couple cars. The way to think about it, in my mind, this decision comes down to whether you're a one and done guy or a, do, or a less is more guy. And let me explain those two. One and done is I'm going to have surgery once. And when my surgery is done, I'm going to be done with surgery. I'm not going back next year. If you're one and done, you want to have the fusion. If you're less is more, less is more is I don't want foreign body and I don't want to have hardware in my body. I don't want to undergo major surgery. I want to try a little laminectomy procedure through a tube and minimally invasive. And if they get away with that, hallelujah. And if they don't, fine, I'll go back. I'll go back next year and then have the fusion. So the decision is which one of those two guys are you? Are you a one and done or are you a less is more? You know, if this if fusion didn't have, you know, 17% chance of reoccurrence in five years or 30% in 10, one would say a fusion. However, to do the laminectomy and hear that I may have to go back in a year or two is also not not good. So that was when I asked my surgeon, what would you do if it was you in there? And he said, well, I'll do the fusion. I mean, with 17% in five years, when you look at the inverse, it's 83% uh, success, which is not too far off from a laminectomy anyhow, right? The laminectomy, I think, can be 85% success. So looking at the fusion, it's less than one in five. Probably not too bad. So I, I wouldn't mind um, pushing the envelope out. I would not like to be the person who would be doing a surgery now and then have to do it next year. Which brings me to my next question would be, what if I don't do the uh, fusion and he does the uh, laminectomy? Would the um, mobility get worse? And no. how would it affect the... How would it affect the spacer that they would put in, that constant move in, or it would stabilize at that point where it's at? The spacer is part of the fusion. So um, if you didn't, ha if you just had the laminectomy, you would not get a spacer. Oh, so the discs, the, the, the degenerative disc will remain? Correct. Almost you, bone on bone for me. Yes, sir. If you just have the laminectomy, the degenerative disc remains. You know what else remains? Um, as I remember, you had mostly pain down the leg, but you had some back pain. Little back pain, yes. My the yes. little back pain is going to remain as well. With the fusion, the little back pain may go away completely. So that's something you need to fact factor in. Yes. So if it, with the laminectomy, the the disc isn't replaced. If I remember when we spoke the last time, the degenerative disc is likely causing the facet joint issue. Facet joint issue is likely causing the stability. So I'm in a circle. So that tells me fusion. Ah, uh, yes, but you're in a circle, but when they did the bending x-rays, there was no movement. So even though theoretically you should be unstable, the forces have caused the shift, but not the instability. And that's why you do have the option of not having a fusion. So I, I agree with you, but not entirely. Mm -hmm. What would you do if it was you? Or it's, your a terrible it's a terrible question. Uh -huh. Because I personally am not one and done. I view back pain as a lifelong problem that needs to be managed. The fact that I would have a laminectomy now and I might have to have something later makes no difference because I believe that this is a problem. It's my cross to bear. Once you have it, it's your cross to bear. And so I would I would have the laminectomy and not the fusion. If I had a surgeon I was confident could do a minimally invasive laminectomy, and I think you do. So I, I think you do have that. So, but honestly, I don't think it's a good question because this is all about Me. you. It's okay. all about you. And mm -hmm. it it comes down to that same thing. Are you one and done or or do you want to you want to get this over with? Be one and done or do you are you willing to 
try for less and accept that you may fail. It it's it, but you could be looking at surgery next year. And what would cause it to fail and have surgery next year? What would be different? Progression of the underlying problem. And then by drilling off the lamina, they're yes. damaging the muscles that are supporting the spine. So there's a little bit, I, you yes. see, I see on MRI all the time, swelling yes. in the joints after laminectomy. And so they're, they're in there messing around with the Lord's work. They're changing the dynamics of the spine and those changes could lead to instability and that instability could lead to the need for fusion. Could act in my problem, okay. Yes, because it, if, if I do have swollen facet joints, I'll likely be shaving that. The lamina bone would be coming out. I have hardened ligamentum flavor, mm -hmm. scraping that. So yep. it, that's what I was thinking. So it is probably true what he was saying that um, it could be causing some more stability just via the laminectomy, which would make matters worse. Okay. Uh huh. That was why I asked for the follow up. I thought it was one of those things. It's up to you, you know. <laughs> um, I would say. A, another way of phrasing that is, mm -hmm. it's all about you. Yes. And once you understand your attitude, that automatically makes the decision. So don't think of it as making yes. the decision. Think of it as understanding mm -hmm. the way that you really feel about the situation. Mm -hmm. And with the fusion, since it's one level only, I think it's not too bad to make that decision. The only issue is the adjustment segment, you know, the likelihood of it um, going forward. Would you know of any lifestyle changes that I should make if I choose to do fusion but want to avoid adjacent segment disease five years from now? Would lifestyle changes help to reduce that possibility? Definitely. The, the thing that supports your spine is your facet joint, number one, your discs, number two, and then your muscles, your core strength, number three. Your facet joints are what they are. You can't change that. Your discs are what they are. You can't change that, but mm -hmm. you sure can change those muscles. And so if you make a real commitment to range of motion and core strength, which comes from things like ballroom dancing or yoga or tai chi engaging in these types of exercise patterns that are known to really build up that spine then you can reduce in theory there's no proof of this yes but it's it makes so much sense it's got to be true you can reduce your risk of having another fusion by maintaining strength and by the way it's super good for you anyway <laughs> like, that's right yeah why not do it yeah. so yeah yes Okay. Okay. That 35% chance of death you had mentioned a while ago with lumbar spinal stenosis, what would be the, the cause of the death? Is that your urinary tract infection? Yes. When yeah, it's oh. it's becoming it's becoming less active, getting urinary tract infection or pneumonia or or blood clots in the legs, yeah. urinary tract infection, pneumonia from not being active and clearing your lungs. Yes. Or or you're inactive and you get in a fall and you just don't have the metabolic reserve to heal. So it's serious, but yes. But you you're going to have a laminectomy no matter what. Your question yes. is whether to add the fusion. But mm -hmm. what's the answer? Are you one and done or are you less is more? I would think I'm one and done even though I know it's not totally done because I have to wait for a five year and 10 years with the fusion, but I would say I'm one and done because I couldn't see myself going through it a year later or two years later, you know? From what I've seen of you in this very short time that I've had the opportunity to get to know you, I think that's the right decision for you. It's not only avoiding uh, the higher risk of another surgery, it's that this is what's been done for uh, decades. This yes. is the traditional treatment. Mm -hmm. This is also the first thought of your surgeon who you have confidence in, and we talked about, sounds like a great surgeon. Mm -hmm. The first thought of your surgeon was to do the fusion. And that makes me think that his practice is oriented toward that outcome. And so I just think if, you know, you said, if it were me, what would I decide? But I think an even better question would be if I were you, 
from what I know about you, what would I decide? And if I were you, I would go with diffusion. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the right answer. Okay. That's All right. Well, you thank you very much. You're welcome, Trevor Carew. It was great talking to you today. I hope you'll come back on afterwards and let us know how it went. Sure, I will. All right.